chapter 1 and I'll read from verse 1 through 7 Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus to Timothy my dear dearly beloved son Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience, 
that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I was trying to download my message from my flash drive this morning. To my iPad, but it wouldn't download. So I say, maybe I'll just go the old time way. One of the things that your insurance company will encourage you to do as you take out a policy, what is called a life policy, your whole life policy, or a term policy is that they will encourage you to make a will. If you have a family attorney, that is one thing they will encourage you to do, to make a will so you might not die in the state, and then the state has to deal with the distribution of your estate. And many of us work all our lives just to have things to leave. Isn't that strange? We work all our lives, we save up, we buy things so we might have things to leave. Most of that desire is selfish. Pastor, how can it be selfish? when I'm leaving it to someone else. Because our motives are wrong. We don't want our children to move on. We want to leave something that they see it every day and remember us. We don't want them to move on. That's a selfish motive. The problem with that is as soon as you get into the grave, they part with it. They sell it. They give it away. And they're finished with it. So material things do not last. They're quickly parted with. I Always remember this man who owned this bus company in Jamaica. All his life he had Green Line bus company. He died and he had two sons. Jack and John. And he left the bus company to them. In six months there was no more Green Line. They did away with it. No more Green Line bus company. So what is your legacy worth? What is your legacy worth? Paul preached in Lystra and Lois got converted, the grandmother of Timothy. Timothy was a half-breed. In the Hebrew language, he was a bastard because his father was Greek and his mother 
was Jewish. No wonder he was not circumcised or blessed in the temple as it were. But God had a purpose for Timothy. And so God saved his grandmother, Lois. After Lois got saved, Eunice got saved. Eunice says, I want some of what mama's got. The kind of freedom, the kind of liberty that Jesus Christ brought to my mother. I want some for myself. Because Timothy's father was not probably active in his life. He was not there to guide him. He was not there to give support to the mother. Eunice's only help was maybe her mother, Lois. In bringing up and nurturing her son. She's one of the greatest examples in scripture for any woman who has the daunting task of spiritually bringing up a child. Timothy saw how wonderful the grace of God was on his grandmother and on his mother. He gave his heart to the Lord. Remember, salvation is not one thing you can leave in a will for your child. If you want them to go to heaven with you, make sure that you lead them to Jesus Christ. You can will everything else, but you can't will salvation. You can bequeath your house, your bank account, everything. But you cannot be queen salvation. The Bible says, let no more the children say the sour grapes of the fathers have edged the teeth of the children. The children must give an account for themselves. But some of us love our children too much to have them kneel down and pray. We are to see, to leave an inheritance that cannot fade away. Lois brings to our attention this morning Mothers who are single, mothers who have no father figure around to help to bring the child up, mothers who are destitute because the fathers have disappeared. You see, God provides for children. The psalmist says, When my mother and my father forsake me. Then the Lord will take me up. God is going to provide somebody. Hallelujah. To come along with a word of rescue. God sent Paul to Lystra. God sent him there. Because somewhere in that home, there was a little boy who needed to be saved. Timothy got saved, and as a young man, Paul gave him the task of going to Ephesus to be pastor there. 
It was not an easy job. Paul didn't really send him. Paul went with him. Paul stayed with him and introduced him to the people there. But Paul had to leave. The Bible said that when Paul was leaving, Timothy cried. That's why Paul wrote in this passage of scripture, I remember your tears. Timothy cried because he saw some stubborn people in church. How am I going to manage these people? How am I going to lead these people? I am but a young boy. These are older people. They're not going to listen to me. Paul had to tell him goodbye. And as Paul was leaving, Timothy cried. Paul, Timothy wanted to leave Ephesus many times. He wanted to give up on that ministry many times. He was discouraged many times. Paul wrote him, let no man despise thy youth, Timothy. Don't be discouraged. Not because you are young. Let no man despise thy youth. Oh, some old folks are set in their ways, you know. That's why a lot of young pastors quit and run leave the church. Because they get a church full of people who are set in their ways. They are stubborn as young calves. You tie the rope on them and they stiffen up on you. You can't leave them. So this letter that Paul wrote was to encourage Timothy to stay the course. To stay the course. And he said to Timothy, I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith of your mother and your grandmother. I call to remembrance the sincere faith. The faith that had not even one ounce of hypocrisy in it. That's what the word unfeigned there means in the Greek. It has no form of hypocrisy in it. It was a sincere faith. What does that which does not fall when trouble comes? One which does not run away when trouble comes. But one which stays the course. Can you imagine what you nicely went through? A Jewess. Go get pregnant for a, for a Gentile. Have a baby boy who can even exercise. Although he's Jewish. Because his mother is Jewish. Because you are more Jewish when your mother is Jewish than when your father is Jewish. I can't even take him to temple. This boy has to stay home because he's a pastor. That's how the Jews looked at him. But Paul came. Hallelujah. God always sends somebody. Mother, when there is no help left in the world, when you feel like you are a cast out, when you feel like you have been abandoned, God always sends somebody. I might be talking to somebody in Liberia right now. God is going to send somebody. I'll be talking to someone in Nigeria right now. God is going to send somebody.
pastor called me from Liberia this week. And he began to tell me about his church and how he's going to get married in December and all of this stuff. And all of a sudden, he started calling me daddy. I said, not when you're going to get married. <laughs> My biological son is not even close there yet. But that's how they deem the bishops and all that stuff. They call them daddy. But he said, I want you to be my spiritual father. I have watched your services on the website. I have read your statements of faith. And I want you to be my spiritual father. Paul was a spiritual father to Timothy. So... As Timothy was there discouraged, church folk getting on his mind, discouraging him, he said, I want out. But Paul says, man, you can't get out of this. Remember the faith of your grandmother and your mother. In the face of rejection, they stood up for Christ. In the face of hardship, they stood up for Christ. Remember them. Remember their faith. Can your children rock back on your faith? <laughs> when you have passed. Can they rock back on your faith because they saw the time when you had nothing but God made a way for you? You didn't go prostitute yourself. You didn't go trick a man to get money. But you were like the woman in, in Proverbs 31. You went out and you become virtuous and you worked with your hands and you provided for your children. You did not sell yourself cheap. Your children can rock back on that because they saw that you were faithful to God in spite of. Paul says, remember, the faith of your mother and your grandmother. I hear big football players and all these athletes come on television from time to time. As they praise their mothers and their grandmothers who instilled value in them because their fathers were not around. Just this week, one was made MVP and he came brought his mother to the ceremony. And as he praised her, she began to cry. And he was very emotional about it. I heard one broadcaster says, I want that tape to take to every school and play it so children can hear. As his mother stood there with them, She said, you are the, he said, you are the MVP. Because you were the one who took me to the ball games. You were the one who instilled values in me. I remember when we had nothing. So he has a legacy that he will never forget. All your money will be worth nothing when you die and leave it because it will finish fast. 
but you can leave a legacy in your children because you had a sincere faith. They saw what God did for you. Mothers are not just those who are biological. But you have surrogate mothers. Mothers who have adopted children. Mothers who have stood with other children and watched them grow up, who helped them through school. Who helped their parents when times were hard. There are mothers there who never gave birth. Yeah. But they've acted the part and played the part of mothers. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how little girls can be so maternal. They love to take care of people. You see, two children walk into school and there's a little girl in the midst. She's the one who wants to hold hand and protect. Even little boys. No, that maternal instinct yeah, kicks boy. in the minute there is problem. She wants to heal the wounds. She wants to bring comfort and consolation. That maternal instinct is right there. Boys are tough. They just walk past it. I hope you get better soon. <laughs> Girls will ask you, do you need anything? What can I do for you? It's a maternal instinct that God has placed there. So Paul says, man, what can I say to you but to tell you to remember your mother's and your grandmother's faith. The faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and then you nice it. I am persuaded. I am convinced that that faith is in you also. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Who taught him? His grandmother and his mother. <clears throat> but they did not just teach him the word. How do children learn? They learn by example. They are walking preachers. People learn from your example. You have a lot of copycats in church today. One person behaved good, a lot of people want to behave good. One person behaved badly, they have a group that will copy them. But if she does it or he does it, I, why can't I do it? Hmm? Why? That's why you have to be careful as a Christian. Because Paul referred to the church at Ephesus as little children. My little children, I write unto you, do as I do. Behave the way you see me. Behave. You are my children in the Lord. Walk uprightly as I have walked uprightly. God. So you teach your children by example. 
That's why Paul could call the faith of Lois and Eunice sincere. Because they lived what they preached. Timothy could not find a double standard in his mother and his grandmother. Women, you're good, you know. You're good people. When you go feel bad. There are some bad examples of mothers in the Bible, too. Women, you have great influence upon your children. If you read 2 Chronicles 22, a mother is mentioned there who destroyed a whole kingdom by the way she influenced her child. Her son when he became king. She destroyed a whole kingdom. Because of her bad influence upon her son. With your influence, destroy your child or make that child better. Timothy must have been an only child for his mother. Lord have mercy. I've seen some mothers spoil their own child. I'm telling you. I mean, I mean some of these only children child have become worthless. They cannot leave mama's house. And even when they leave, they want a wife just like mama. Mama did everything for me. So I have a funeral to hear him say, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? My bad influence is gone. My spoiler is gone. How am I going to make it on my own now? But I admire you, Nancy. Paul saw where Timothy had grown spiritually. And he said, I'm going to send you to Ephesus as bishop. I have planted some churches in Ephesus and I want you to go down there and pastor these churches. You and I see was willing to let go because God was priority in her life. Paul had to circumcise Timothy because he said there are some Jews down there that are not going to want to listen to you because you are an uncircumcised man. But I know that you are a Jew because your mother is a Jew. So let me tell you something. Their faith was not only a sincere faith. Their faith was a sure faith. It was a strong faith. It was a faith that held on to what they had learned from God and they would never let go. They would never let go. You know, I, I'm used to hearing
some women speak um, in the old church. I, I don't know. Women are a bit brash now and harsh and liberated and gone into feminism. All sorts of stuff. But I used to hear some graceful women. As they spoke, grace rolled off their tongue. Oh yes, they spoke gracefully <clears throat> and graciously. And I remember those old days when, when women took uh, being an example in church as a privilege. Young girls had people to look up to. Titus chapter 2. Paul says the women are to be sober. They are to be good examples unto the younger women. Not bad influence. Young girls, don't listen to all the women when they're telling you to do bad things. Learn to discern right from wrong. So that God may help you to grow in the right way. The older women are to teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husbands, and love their children. They have to teach them what are you teaching the young women around you? Do you have such a sure faith that nothing can make you feel small? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Because I'm walking in submission to my God and I know that what I'm doing is right, nothing can make me feel small. A real Christian woman don't have a problem with identity. Real Christian no have no problem with that. A real Christian knows who she is in Christ Jesus. So when she is submissive, she knows who she is in Christ Jesus. I am not short of anything, but I love Jesus. What's wrong with that? Nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong with that. Because the more you submit to Jesus, is the more you can draw from him. Sub means under. And Jesus has a mission. So you must be in submission to him. Once you're under his mission, you can draw from him. You can only become better for it. In heaven there is no feminism, mm -hmm. no men's right and no women's right. It's just those who are saved by the grace of God. Those who have humbled themselves. Those who have walked with Jesus. Church folks don't want to live by scripture. They want to write a new Bible for themselves and they want to make this obsolete. But the Bible says before one jot or one tittle pass from these words, heaven and earth pass away. But pastor, these are modern times. But God is a God of all ages. Mm -hmm. My father used to say, this is modern hell. Mm -hmm. God is a God of all ages. God is immutable. He does not change with time. Hallelujah. 
He does not change with time. He's the same God yesterday, today and forever. You know, because God doesn't strike us down and kill us. Thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ. We just take it for granted. But we will have to answer one day. We will have to answer one day for the carelessness, for the negligence that come. Not only was their faith sincere and sure, but they had strengthening faith. Strengthening. Paul says, because when you write back on what your mother and your grandmother taught you, you will exercise the gifts and stir them up that are in you. <laughs> Timothy was a little bit timid. He had a lot of self-pity. How do you mean, Timothy? How could the apostle expect me? I remember when my pastor, great theologian, he taught me, Reverend Dr. Robert Oscar. Once he approached me and he says, I want you and I to, to do a crusade next week. I said, you and me? He said, yes. I said, no, 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 no. I said, you and me preaching from the same pulpit at the same time? No, 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 no. I had revered him so much. And the man was so knowledgeable, such a great teacher of scripture. I could never believe that the great Robert Oscar would ask me to alternate in a pulpit with him. Those were the men, <coughs> like St. Paul, who took up little men and said, let's rock the world for Jesus. Timothy was afraid and Paul says, remember the faith that was in your mother and your grandmother. I am persuaded that that faith is in you also. Why? Because that is something you can't waste. That is something you can't spend out. That is something you can't give away. It's going to be in you forever. And you sow good seeds in your children. Mothers. They'll never forget. They'll never forget. They'll never forget. He says because of that. I bring thee in remembrance. That thou stir up the gift of God. Which is in thee. By the putting on of my hand. Why? Because God hath not given you a spirit of fear. The faith that is in you is a strengthening faith. It's an encouraging faith. It's a faith that will make you step out of the boat. It's a strengthening faith. God, I can't do it all by myself. Remember what Peter says? Nevertheless, at thy word, I will cast my net. We toiled all night, Jesus, and we caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, that's 
what we stand on. We literally stand on the word of God. God hath not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Don't make these people say you're crazy. <laughs> Don't let church people send you crazy. Think about it. Because your grandmother and your mother instilled in you a strengthening faith. What are you instilling in your children? A whole part of the fault when you get to heaven and they are not there with you will be yours. What are you instilling in your children? And if I spend, if I spend Eight hours with my son. 7.5 of it is talking about the Bible. We were together yesterday. And I listened until I just started saying, uh-huh. 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 Yeah, I listened until I... And Rachel came into my bedroom and she knelt by the bed and she started, Oh, daddy, this lady is that. And she, she is such a strict Christian and I had to tell her, and straighten her out of that. Then she left the bedroom. She said, why aren't you teaching in Bible college? Because these people are confused. But they have parents that they can come to. And they can get stuff straightened out. I have to become interpreter of dreams. <laughs> oh, yeah. All this stuff. You know, David is so language buff that he dreams in Greek sometimes. <laughs> he does. Come to him and say, what does this word mean? I said, why? Because last night I was dreaming I saw this guy and I used the word and I didn't know what it meant. Because it's so fostered in their minds that they can't rest from it. I am accused of preaching every time. And I deem that a very good accusation. There you go again, Daddy, preaching. Yeah. I'm going to preach it, brother. I'm going to preach it, sister. That's my responsibility. And I got to preach it at home before I preach it abroad. For thou shalt be preachers in Jerusalem first. So when I'm dead and gone, and, and, and they are about their business, my daughter said, my greatest fear is that I'm going to always hear that voice. Wherever I'm at, I'm going to hear that voice. When my mother died and I preached at her funeral. I could do it because I knew of her faith. I wasn't going to lie from the pulpit for her. I knew she trusted God. I knew she was sold out to Jesus. I knew she stood up for the gospel, for what was right. And I never had to apologize for her from the pulpit. I just preached. Because who I know her to be, the last discussion I had with her before she died 
we were sitting on my wife's aunt's veranda. And she said, you know, this past week, at that time, she wasn't two together. A little bit of old age and senility was taking place there. She said, you know, this week I was thinking, if Jesus should come now, how would I react? She said, I sat down thinking about that. Would I be happy? Would I be nervous? How would I react? When she died and I went to the funeral home, I hugged her in her casket and I said, Mama, now you know. Now you know. Hallelujah. Now you know. Jesus has come for you. Now you know. I remember when I used to take her Sunday school book and study it so I could teach Sunday school class. I remember those days. Eight years old, nine years old. When I was ten, I was teaching the young men's class. Because of what grandpa did. My mother taught me. My mother loved the Lord. My father loved the Lord, but he was always busy. My mother was always there. I'd go in at 12 o'clock and that woman would get up and sit up with me while I eat and listen to all my stories for all the days. Some little years after, she said, you know, I didn't believe three quarters of those stories. She would spend time with me. She would talk to me. What was important to her was that we know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. She gave me strengthening faith because they weren't rich. They were not. But you wouldn't know that. They were proud. They had dignity. They had character. Nobody would ever know if we have or we don't have. Never. We get out there in that starch khaki suit and go to school, no lunch money. But no man in the world knew we had no lunch money. And we couldn't tell anybody. We couldn't eat from anybody. One day I bought somebody's lunch. I saw the guy's lunch and I said, boy, your lunch looks so good. And I'm going up the road to buy some little stuff, maybe pull a cake and, you know, they used to sell you a little strawberry syrup in the glass. A lot of people don't know that because they were in court. Yes. <laughs> I said instead of go up there and buy that with my trap on I'm going to give the guy and, uh, and get some nice he had some nice potato phone in his thing some nice little thing in his shot pan there he was glad to get my trap <laughs> So I gave him, got it. I didn't know the news would reach my father before I get home. Man, I had everything to pay. And I got home. He never attacked me till homework was done. Then you're ready to go to bed. He says, I need to deal with you. And he's coming with that local made leather belt. That the local shoemaker made with all the excesses. He says, How could you do that to me? How could you do such a thing to me? And he dealt with me. So the 
tell you is, be satisfied with what you have. A lot of parents see people bringing home car, bringing home money, buying this, and they don't know where they get the money. They don't know where their children get the money. All they're happy for is that they bring home stuff. Mothers, you must ask question. How could you afford this when we have no money? Where did you get it from? They must be accountable. But that can only happen when they see an example in your life. When you have strengthening faith, your children will be strong. When you have sincere faith, your children will be sincere. They will not be hypocritical. Their yeas will be yeas and their nays will be nays because you were sincere and you planted it in them. When you have a sure faith, they will stand strong on the word of God. St. Paul says, bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The word says, grow your children right. Whatever you teach them, they will not forget. They'll forget about your money. They'll forget about your house. They'll forget about your car. But they will not forget the Jesus in you. I'm telling you that. They will never forget the Jesus in you. I remember when my mother was at her wit's end. But she prayed. But she prayed and Jesus helped. Did they finish spending their money already? They're broke now. But they can wrap back on your faith. The rich young woman, the rich guy, he, the, 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 the prodigal son, he came to his father, he says, I can't wait till you die in the day. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till you die. So whatever you want to leave on the will for me, give me now. I'm going to wait till you die because I don't know when you're going to die. So you give it to me now. He took it. Bought prostitutes. <laughs> this, that, had some good drinks with his friends. Lived it up. And the money ran out. The money ran out. Those things will run out. But the Jesus in you will never leave. Let your children remember that. If you leave them nothing in this life, leave them with Jesus. Lead them to Jesus. Let them watch you live a life of faith in Jesus. Because there are some things that money just cannot buy. I tell you that. How is it with you today? Mothers, are you living a consecrated life? What do you talk about with your children? Do you spend all the time gossiping about other people? And other people's children and other people's business? The next time you talk to your child, say, I need to tell you something that I discovered in scripture. I need to teach you something from God's word. St. Paul wrote this letter to Timothy when he was on his way out. These words 
his last words to Timothy. Because he says in the second book, he says, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Therefore is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord shall give to me on the day of his appearing. But not to me only, but to all who love his appearance. I am about to leave this life, Timothy. And I'm bringing these things to your remembrance. Every church should be structured from the book of Timothy. Every church should be structured because Timothy and Titus are called the pastor's books. It tells us how to conduct ourselves in the church of God. Structures the church. Paul says, rock back on your grandmother and your mother's faith. They left you the greatest wealth any man could receive. Their faith. Can you look back at your parents and say they left me their faith? Can your children look back at you when you die? And instead of talking about the stuff, can they say, she left me with a strong faith? With a strong faith. If I just have one eighth of the faith my mother had. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit of their faith. When, when I call home and say, honey, what are you cooking this evening? She say, you know, I'm tired today and blah, blah, blah. I wonder how my mom managed now. But these are people who I knew who put on their pots with just the water in it. Mm -hmm. Trusting God that something will come. Mm -hmm. And it came. Let me tell you something. That's faith. They put on the pot with just the water in it. Trusting God that something will come. And before long, you hear somebody call. I'm just passing it up. And the Spirit said, leave this way. That's faith. But we saw self reliant in this age that we don't need God. Let me tell you something this world is not getting better. And it's never going to get better. What are you leaving your children and your grandchildren? The stock market might take the money, the IRS wants most of it. What are you leaving with your children? Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Seeking to please him in all that I do. That's what I'm going to leave for my children most of all. A life that was lived for Jesus. A faith that believes in Jesus. The other day we were talking in a family, a very prominent member of the family. She said, we were talking about church and everything like that, and what people believe now about Jesus and all that. And she said, I read a lot of things. But me not forgetting she wasn't going to forget what my wife's grandmother and grandfather taught her. She says, nobody will ever make me forget what they taught me. Yes. Aunt Lita and Marcelle. 
I'll never forget, she said, what they taught me. And nobody can make me change from what they taught me. What are you?
awesome response. Hallelujah. You see, what you don't know is that God looked down from heaven. And he had a little child that needed stewardship. God picked you out of seven billion people and gave that child to you. That's greater than the lottery. God picked you out of seven billion people. Thank you. Whether it be a surrogate child or a biological child, God looked upon the earth and out of seven billion people entrusted the life of a child to take care of. Can you imagine that? Some have 14, some have 20, some have one. But God trusted that, entrusted that to you. And you might not have any money to die and leave them. You'll never have enough to die and leave to children. Mm -hmm. But I tell you something, you can leave them with something that's everlasting. I admire you, Tisha. As you come every Sunday seeking your Lord. Never stop seeking the Lord. Because he's going to, he's right here for you. And he's going to meet your needs that mommy or daddy cannot meet. Because he's going to strengthen you. I'm going to see you one of these days growing up and knowing that this little young lady always came to the altar. Look how wonderful and beautiful she is. Look how graceful and gracious she is. Because God was constantly working on her and she was pliable in the hands of God. Little Miss Ryan. God is going to bless you. We have strong God there who love Jesus. They love him. I can testify of their love for Jesus. Your grandfather sits in his sanctuary praying for all his children every day and his grandchildren. He sits in there and he reads the Bible. Sometimes he's here all day fasting and praying and just sitting all by himself, having church all by himself, praying that God will save his children and his grandchildren. You're awesomely blessed mm -hmm. to have your appearance like that. As you walk and put your life in the hand of Jesus, He will bring everything in your life to perfection. He will make your career that you're seeking one that is meaningful, both to you and to you will be a blessing to your parents and your grandparents. Your father is standing by your side. He knows of the faith of your grandparents. One time he might have given his life to Jesus before, and I'm glad he's at the altar with you today. Because it's a place of consecration and dedication. So just bow your heads with me and close your eyes. And pray after me, dear Jesus. I stand before you today a sinner. I confess that I am unworthy of all the grace that you do. But I thank you for your love. I thank you that you're a gracious God. And I thank you for the forgiveness of sin. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God, that God raised you from the dead. And I am here standing on that belief that you are the Savior of the world. And I thank you for hearing me. 
help me to stand strong upon your word and to learn your word and teach it to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Pray this prayer. God has forgiven you of your sin. You don't have to know it. God has forgiven you of your sin. All you have to do is read the Bible. Read the book of St. John. As John walked with Jesus. He sat with him at the Pascal table. Jesus kept him for the Isle of Pines. God showed him unto him. So if you read the book of St. John, it will strengthen you. Let that be the first book of the Bible you read. Because it's plain, it's easy, it tells you who Jesus is, it tells you from whence he comes. It tells you that if you believe in him, God gives you the authority. So today you have that authority. See that it's out. You can now call God the Father. It's not You can now call Him the Father. Isn't that your mommy and here for you? God is there for you. They may be upset. You never know. You never know what life will bring. But you can always know that God is there for you. My mother and my father are dead. Sometimes I wish mm -hmm. they were around just to talk to them. They are not here, but I can go to my heavenly father. Have myself in the bathroom and say, oh God, mm -hmm. you know, I want to have a talk. I want to talk. To tell you what's on my mind, what I desire. have a big baptism. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please turn in your hymn books now to hymn number 788. Hymn number 788. Now thank we all our God.
To him is able to keep you from falling and present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Uh -huh. 